It's now been a week since federal prosecutors pulled back the curtain on a college admissions cheating and bribery scandal. The scheme involved wealthy parents, a pair of actresses, including Lori Laughlin, business leaders, and a college placement firm at the center of it all, led by William Singer. It bought students' admission into high-profile schools like Yale, UCLA, Georgetown, and the University of Southern California. USC said today it's blocking students associated with the scandal from registering for classes for now. The scandal has sparked a wider conversation, and John Yang will pick up on that in a moment. But first, let's hear from some high schoolers themselves. Our student reporting labs reached out around the country for our weekly segment, Making the Grade. Here's what some of them had to say. It's easier to get into college if you're rich. I feel like that's just a given. Like, everyone knows that. I feel like it really, like, degraded the process, how, like, people try so hard and then others just, like, were able to pay someone to get in and that, like, messed up the whole system and how it's not fair for everyone else because some people just don't have that money. You know, maybe it used to be your parents donated the library and now it's, you've got a fixer who bumps your SAT score up 400 points, but, yeah, I'm not that surprised. Our ACT scores are high and theirs aren't, but that won't matter because they have enough money to just pay their way in. By the end of my senior year, I will have taken nine AP courses, three SATs, and two ACTs, but that won't even guarantee me an admissions offer to an elite institution. A lot of us have spent like our whole senior year and a lot of time and energy and conversations and money trying to get into the schools that we see best fit and to see that they can just look around and pick whichever one they want to go to and then just hand money over and then they're in is kind of disturbing. It, it upsets me because my mom's a hardworking mom and like I'm gonna be the first one to graduate from high school and go to college and it's just like I have to pay my way for college. <coughs> I have to make sure that I do, I gotta grind so I can get into a college and they're just paying their way through. Their parents are just like, oh, here you go, baby. No, like that's not fair at all. I know people um, in, in the lower Milwaukee area who work very hard at, at, at their school work and they work so incredibly hard trying to, to get out of their situation and um, but they just can't because they have to go home and they have to care for their family and then they have to work two jobs to make ends meet and I feel like then to like have somebody who doesn't do any of that come and pass you over um, is just a big disrespect. There's future scientists and lawyers and doctors and teachers that aren't getting a shot because people like Lori Laughlin are just paying their way in for their kids. Most of the people that I know don't have an extra fifteen or twenty thousand dollars to throw at uh, someone like Singer to, you know, pay their way into college. My parents can't pay five hundred thousand dollars to get me into any college I want. Um, so like that does put a lot of pressure on making sure that like all my grades are good and like GPA and everything. So it kind of just almost demeans the meaning of what a higher education is because we like to hold it to a very high standard um, but if you can just pay your way in if you have enough money what does that what does that truly mean the parents of most of the students we just heard from can't afford to hire a private counseling company like the one at the center of the scandal instead they rely on high school counselors who on average each advise about 482 students Jane Fonash was one of those uh, counselors until very recently. She was a counselor in the Loudoun County, Virginia Public Schools for 24 years. She's now an independent college consultant and president-elect of the National Association for College Admission Counseling. Jane Fonash, thanks and uh, welcome. Thank you. You hear those students and they all have, they all talk like the system is stacked against them. What do you say to them? What do you say to their parents? What I would say to them is I would want to acknowledge the pressure that they feel to get into what they perceive as the best college. And it saddens me because the process should be an adventure and a growing experience for students and families. There's more and more need for good high school counselors all over the country because research shows that students who have access to a counselor in high school and who can plan and go through the process with the support of a good counselor are likely to be admitted and to be successful as undergraduate students. To their parents, I would say, ease back a little on the pressure and remind your students that no matter where they go to college, they will have opportunities to, to grow, to have internships, to be successful, they will create their lives themselves regardless of where they go to school. 
What's the best support? You talk about the, the, the supporting the student through the process. What's the best support that a student could get? An example of good support that a student could receive is having access to a counselor throughout high school, beginning conversations early on to be sure that they are taking challenging courses, and being involved in some things in the community that are important to them. And then during junior and senior year, visiting schools and making some informed decisions about schools where they would likely be successful and where they would have a good chance at being admitted. When you were in the Loudoun County Public Schools, how many students on average would you be counseling at one time and how much support and attention could you give them? Loudoun County is actually on the lower end of some of the national numbers. The, the ratio of counselors to students there is approximately 300, 320 to 1, which is lower than the number that, that you cited earlier. Those public school counselors are, however, responsible not only for post-high school planning, but for mental health issues, academic advising, responding to family crises. So the difficulty for a public high school counselor is that they wear many hats in any given day and cannot devote 100% of their time to college counseling. That being said, they are great counselors and they have the best interest of their students in mind and, and try to spend as much time as possible on each of those things that helps to build a strong, confident, well-prepared student. You're now an independent consultant. Like, not, well, I mean, the, the independent consultant in this case, you don't do those things, but what does an independent consultant do? What support can you, does an independent consultant provide? So as an independent consultant, I am available to work with individual students at their request or that of, of their parents. It is a private arrangement, but many independent consultants also do volunteer work in their communities with first-generation students, with community-based organizations, and I hope to spend some of my time doing that as well. Loudoun County, as you know, is, is a very um, well-endowed county. There are lots of opportunities. Our, our, um, Families enjoy lots of privileges, but there are still pockets of first-generation students, students whose families don't have the access to other counseling, and those are some of the students that I, along with other independent counselors, hope to serve as well, along with all the good work that's being done by the public school counselors. What can the system, or how can the system be changed? What can be done to make the students that we just heard in that tape spot feel that it's a fair, a, a level playing field. So you mentioned that I'm president-elect of the National Association for College Admission Counseling. We were founded over 80 years ago for the specific purpose of being sure that the college admission process was ethical and that there was a level playing field for students to go through this process. So while the recent indictments do focus on several unscrupulous players, we have 15,000 members along with thousands more high school counselors and college admission officers who do our work on a daily basis adhering to an ethics code that be sure, ensures that our behavior and the opportunities for students are conducted in an ethical manner. Jane Fonash, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.